Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Ray and I'm executive editor for Wealth Council LLC. That means I have responsibility for the content in our Wealth Council legal documents. I want to talk to you a little bit this afternoon about the enhancements that we're making to our Wealth Council documents that will be released in January 2012. But in order to put those comments in context, I want to explain to you about two new systems that we have in place for the development of content for Wealth Council LLC legal documents. In order to do that, I need to tell you a little bit of our past history. In the past, the primary documents for the Wealth Council LLC were developed by the principal owners. They came together a number of years ago to put together our basic platform of documents and the owners have expanded those over the years with contributions that they've made and that contributions that other people have made. As a result, our process of creating the documents has been somewhat ad hoc and there has been a lack of uniformity in many cases with the language that's used in the documents. So we decided in 2011 to remedy that situation. The first thing that we wanted to do was put together some uniformity in the way that we determined what the content, new content, would be for our Wealth Council documents. And in order to do that, we established dedicated committees of members who had experience in drafting and planning in particular areas of estate planning. We put together four member advisory groups that have responsibility for certain portions of the suite of documents in the Wealth Council LLC system. The first group is our advanced planning group. That group has responsibility for the irrevocable trusts such as uh, irrevocable life insurance trust, uh, grantor retained annuity trusts, uh, QPERTs, um, intentionally defective grantor trust, the advanced type of estate planning options that some of our users need. And that group meets, discusses enhancements that can be made to the system, and then after that discussion, we work out a time um, scale or a timeline in which we can bring those enhancements into the system. So that was the first group. The second group is the business advisory group. That group has responsibility for all of our business documents. We're talking here about the LLC, the, the FLP, and also the module that contains our business succession documents. The third group is our asset protection group. That group has responsibility for the asset protection features of the beneficiary trust contained in our RLT and wills. In addition, our asset protection features of our irrevocable trusts and our LLCs and FLP documents. And last but not least, our charitable giving uh, advisory group, which has responsibility both for the inter vivos and the um, testamentary charitable lead trusts, charitable remainder trusts, and private foundations. So that's the first thing that we've done to bring greater uniformity uh, to the way that we make our enhancements. The other thing that we've done is we've hired a special editor who has responsibility for the grammatical conventions and the grammatical consistency of our documents. That person is Carol Claspey, who happens to be not only an attorney, but a English professor in uh, universities in Missouri. We brought her in on a full-time basis to review our documents and do two things. Number one, to create a style guide that can be used when documents are drafted and edited. And number two, to do a systematic review and make sure that we use grammatical conventions that are consistent throughout our documents. Carol's already done that first step. She's put together a style guide that will be useful to us in the future as we create new documents and is available to you users as you edit documents, perhaps for your state law or for other specific situations that aren't covered by the documents, so you use the same style. One of the things that the uh, member advisory groups did was identify enhancements that, want, that they wanted to have made to our documents. And we're working on categorizing those enhancements now. And that was all done in 2011. And beginning in 2012, those enhancements are coming in. 
Uh, the first batch of enhancements has to do with something that was very much in demand by our members, and that was for the LLC. The new LLC was rolled out last year, but we didn't really have time to incorporate one of the elements that, that some people felt was really necessary for that document. And that was the addition of voting and non-voting membership interests. So with the January enhancement, we've added that in. And beginning in January, you're going to be able to create limited liability companies that allow you to create two category of membership interests. One category of membership interests will be those members who have voting privileges in the company, and the other category is going to be members who have no voting interests in, in the document. And there may be different reasons for doing that, perhaps for valuation discount purposes, for control purposes, but you will be able to do that now. That always comes with the caveat that you're going to want to make sure that you can use those interests uh, under the law of the state in which you create the LLC. Another thing that we've added is, is we've created preferred interests on income distribution uh, for the LLC. So with the exception of an LLC that's taxed as an S corporation, because that could possibly be deemed by the service as creating a second class of stock, we've created for um, LLCs that are taxed as C corporations or taxed as partnerships um, preferred membership interests uh, for income purposes. So those are two of the enhancements that we've made to the LLC. The other enhancement is a very big enhancement that Carol and I have been working on, and that is to apply the style guide to the documents. And we started with our flagship document, the Revocable Living Trust. And so for the last several months, Carol and I have been going through the Revocable Living Trust and we've been doing editing of that trust so that it now is compatible with our style guide. And we think that when you create your revocable living trusts, um, we've done kind of like the 4-H says, we've made the best better. I think you're going to find that our RLT is much easier to read and has a uniformity of language that wasn't present before. Well, those are the enhancements that we're making for the first part of 2012. As I said, we've categorized our enhancements using our member advisory committee. More are going to come out in the summer, and we're also going to be applying that style guide to, to our irrevocable documents and other documents in the system uh, in, in the months ahead. Thank you very much for your time.